Welcome to the May 1st, 2017 School Committee. First order of business to review and approve the minutes of April 6th. I don't know. Did she send them out to everything? I, I got them. You got them? Oh, good. So I that one I just need you to send me for perpetuity. We'll do that. Those forever. We really will. <laughs> Thank you. It was a tough meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we, have a, we have a motion to a motion to approve my own minutes. <laughs> right. And I'll second it. All in favor? All right. All right. Uh, Patty's not here tonight. Anything on the financial situation that we should be aware of? There's there were five warrants totaling twenty-eight thousand eight hundred thirty-two dollars and twenty cents. Thank you. I noticed in reviewing the uh, financial statement. There are a number of uh, deficits, but I'm assuming things are okay because Patty didn't right. pass anything on that yeah, overall, indicated otherwise. So. Yeah, I mean, overall, I, you know, I leave the, the hard math to her, but overall, I can tell you we also have a whole lot of line items that aren't as far along as they might have been in the past. So I think that we're probably looking to be able to cover them. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, very sure. good. Uh, public comment. I'm seeing no public. We'll move on. Okay, first item under unfinished business is an update on the tree project. Yeah, I, I don't have any. The, the last note I sent out was the, the best I know that was, was something that Keith was going to do. Um, and I haven't talked to him, so. I can call him prior to your next meeting if you'd like and bring a report back. I did talk to Keith a while back and I think he said uh, May 15th is the cutoff date for proposals on the, the trees that they're ordering. So other than that, I don't know what his plan is for removing the stumps or for planting, but that's the uh, only information that I have. So hopefully somebody follows up. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, would it be helpful if we uh, had another small meeting, or like we did last time, or um, I mean May fifteenth, right around the corner, right? Maybe just a phone. I'd be happy to make a phone call to Keith and find sure, out. Sure. If you want to set something up, yeah. I could attempt. I don't know about Katie. Well, that well, on it. I could also just start by calling him and see if I can't get an update that I can send. Is it to just to coordinate the? Getting it done, the project, or is there other more or questions? Just, I think the question is the schedule. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, th apparently there's a time of year where buying these trees is going to be a, a good deal. And um, and if you think it's May 15th is sort of a deadline, I, I would love to find out where we stand on that. I think they, they went out to bid on but I'm not sure. Okay. Let me give them a call and I'll see if I can't get you an update. We had a planning meeting, uh, meeting earlier in the... Uh, in the, the late winter and we discussed the trees we were buying, the kinds that we were and how they were going to be arranged. Mm -hmm. And then nothing much has happened, but I guess if the date down is probably right that the date is May fifteenth, so that's why we haven't seen any action. It's probably a good idea to reach out to Keith. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um building update on recent and building inspector. Business. stuff the we during during the break we had an electrician here and he's got all of the uh, emergency lighting up to where it needs to be that ended up costing us about seven hundred dollars um, the sprinkler contractor was here and his original purchase order was for forty three hundred dollars he found couple of significant leaks while he was here and the original um, proposal he gave us for pendant heads was for five and he went around the building and counted and got 20. So he's given us a proposal for an additional $4,600 um, to take care of the couple of leaks and to do the additional heads. Um, so I'd like hopefully to get permission to tell him to go ahead with that tonight. I just wonder where we're going. How are we going to pay for it? Where it's coming from. That's the same. There's money in that. Oh, that's right. There's we money do in have that budget. account. Yes. Oh, okay. this is from. Yeah. 
Yeah. Last time I had an update on that account, I think it was in the low 40s, and I think there's probably 30, mid 30s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and the, the, the leaks? The leaks? So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead. Caught me off guard here. It's <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, the stage curtain was scheduled to be fireproofed on the Friday of the break. Um, that's a one person company. He called me that Friday and said he had a family emergency. He's rescheduled to come out here on Saturday, the 13th of May. So either myself or someone will meet him here and get him in, and he can take care of that. And I'm going to probably, you know, that that's a process now that if the building inspector is going to keep after us on it, it's going to have to be done every three years. And I think I've priced out a new curtain at something like $2,000. So I will probably start putting in my long-term budget that we ought to consider replacing that with a curtain that's permanently fireproofed. Oh, they're permanently fireproofed. Yeah, the, new ones, the new ones are made of a material that doesn't have to be, to be redone. Um, How much does the fireproofing cost? Pardon me? How much does it cost to prove the, the fireproof? The, what we're fireproofs costing is six hundred and fifty dollars now for something that will run for three years, and that's a you know if, if it was a newer curtain you know maybe for a couple of three year intervals we'd do that but mm -hmm. you know there's some there's some wear and tear on the corner of that mm -hmm. curtain and so if if we get another three years out of it or at the most six years and try to budget a new curtain I think that'd be okay. a good thing to do. Um, I've got two proposals for work on the streetlights. Um, one of which is for the, the, the lights that were damaged by the fire from the heat. And that proposal, the way I originally presented it, is for $3,873. Um, $1,640 of that is for replacing the wiring inside of it that's melted. And 2233 was was for replacing the poles. Um, in talking with Pete today, um, he questions the need for replacing the poles. Um, I see it as as one of those issues that could go either way. I mean, if we if the insurance company will pay for two new poles, um, it gives us an opportunity. Um, to maybe have spare to we can use to if, if we're going to repaint them we can repaint them on the ground. I'm not sure. Um, a lot depends on on how you folks perceive it and want to handle it with the insurance company. The poles are perfectly serviceable, but you know they are somewhat scorched on the backside from the fire. Well, I mean it's worth asking the question. You know whether they'll pay for the replacement. My my concerns. Um, are, I guess, <coughs> kind of twofold. One is that um, I just, I had a good hard look at those poles, and I would be, not being a fire inspector, I'd be hard pressed to pick out the ones that look bad because of the fire. They all have peeling paint on them and some rust on them. Um, the aesthetic concern is can we get two poles that match the other poles? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to have two poles back there that don't look alike. And if they come unpainted, then we got to paint them anyway. So. Um, and, you know, I understand the insurance company may pay for it, but I, I'd rather send them a reasonable bill and feel insured that they will pay for it. Um, I would like Andy to take a look at that work to, to determine whether it's something we could, you know, scrape the paint off, fix up the poles, and then just let them do the wiring. I didn't realize there were two poles involved because with the first part of the job where the wiring had melted, that was only inside one pole. They may be suggesting to change the other pole just because of the cosmetics. Which again, we might be able to take care of the cosmetics and not spend um, how much so money. So, who's suggesting that we replace the poles? Building inspector, right? Well, no. we after the fire, mm -hmm. we had someone check them just to be sure because they okay. were right. One of them particularly was right at the fire, yeah. and they, you know, in fact, one of the poles wasn't working, I believe. That's right. They're and so cool. they repaired it. And they said the wire was melted inside of it, okay. so they gave us pricing for replacing, for replacing the wiring. And basically, what they said is they, you know, they saw the the, the fact that the, the poles um, had peeling paint on them and that sort of thing, and, and you can see a little bit of soot on them. So, 
you know, that their proposal was that we can we can get put in, in we can place. put it in put in the claim or not put in the claim. And I'm kind of ambivalent about it. I'm I'm willing to go either way. The caveat is we need to have our eyes open as we do it because often we'll repair something like that and some will say, well, what'd you do? It looks just the same as before, <laughs> so. So they, as the insurance company, said they suggested that, no. No, the insurance company's gonna get paperwork from us, whatever we submit to them. Okay. The folks from Universal Electric, oh, the I suppose, company. are the ones who I recommend the yeah, change of the okay. polls. Wow, well, uh, well, right. So, so, but just to add a little more detail, so that, f the, the one post, Right now, everything is working. The, the lights were, the lights were. and they, they've been working since just you know a couple of weeks after the fire is when we discovered that that one lamppost was out, and then we saw there were four back there, two on the fire side, two on the, on the garage side. We noticed that the back one on the garage side, the front one on the fire side weren't working, two entirely different reasons. The one in the back wasn't working because the cap at the top of the pole was gone, water had gone in there, shorted out, they repaired that, it's working. The other one did indeed have wires melted inside, that's how hot it got. That's repaired and working, but these aren't permanent repairs. What they want to do now is rewire all four posts, which I think is a great idea. Again, they're old, if we have new fresh wires and everything, I think that'll be ideal. It sounds like the second post that they wanted to replace, there was, that, not, that light never went out. So part of the project is, again, to replace the wiring in all four, and that's why it's a little expensive, but that post, was just exposed to fire, but nothing had melted inside it, the other one on the other side. So, so the way it would break down is that, I suppose if we did the posts on that one side, that we could present the bill to the insurance company for the two that had fire, cosmetic fire damage. But now again, I would question, am I gonna get two posts that look like the ones I have, or are they gonna be different? Um, but either way, the wiring on three posts, that's the other quote, that belongs to us. The wiring on the one we're going to submit to insurance because that's the fire burned the wires inside there. But the rest of the rewiring is is our option, and I, and I do suggest we do it. And that that was the one to the tune of uh, yeah. You know. So the 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 two that he wants the, the two that he suggested rewiring because of the heat from the fire are sixteen hundred and forty dollars for the rewiring, and then we have two poles over on the other side of the parking lot that pizza, that pizza alluded, that I haven't alluded to yet, he was just discussing that the, the cap on the top of the pole leaked and they had a lot of water in there. We've had ongoing problems with those and so they quoted us essentially the same price for rewiring those two poles. So we've got either, we've either got a $1,600 wiring for the fire damage poles and a $1,600 wiring for the water damage poles or a $3,800 pole replacement and rewiring for the fire damage side. And we can do that whichever way. And we've already submitted a bill for the work that they did to just get that post going. That's already gone to Keith, and Keith already shared it with Brian. That goes back probably two months mm -hmm. ago. So the patchwork they did has already been submitted to the chance. So we would get half or yeah. Full 1640 back at, least <coughs> at a minimum yeah. for the two That's posts right. near the fire. And the other 1640, I'm relatively confident, is available in, in, the, in the budget. That's your right. amount. We, okay. we can definitely pay that through our budget. But the, uh, but the cost of the posts. Um, well, know, they don't sound like they're that expensive, though. Posts? No, that, that's a separate cost. The posts are twenty-two hundred dollars. Twenty-two, yeah, for both of them. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, to do all four posts rewiring is about thirty-four hundred, if I'm not mistaken. Sixteen and sixteen. Yes, thirty-two. Thirty-two. Well, thirty-two. Rewiring, 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 rewiring and, and the cost of one or two of those will go to insurance. It sounds like what we're what we're thinking is that the two that were on the fire side, why not submit them to insurance? Because mm -hmm. the wires in there might have been wanted to on the other side. Well, they definitely, the electrician has, has said to me several times that, you know, they made a temporary repair, on that they were not entirely comfortable on with. On one post. Yeah. But he yeah. said he looked at both posts, right. and, and both of them, the wires were affected by the heat. Okay, all right, that's good. That's so we right. need to rewire at least two street lights. That's correct. 
No, we really need to wire, rewire. Right. Sounds like we should all, rewire all of them. The question is whether we do the post. Two of which post. are damaged by water. Right. I don't know. I mean, if you think you can deal with the posts and make them more presentable, stay with them. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, mean I, I don't feel the need to spend extra money unless we know that the insurance I mean, is going to I don't to think that he damaged the metal. It's just damaged the paint on a pole. I mean, you can paint the Yeah, pole. I mean, that's what I think, too. Right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I'm certainly, I'm not saying I'm opposed to letting the insurance company pay for it or having Universal put in two new ones, but it really would be nice if the two new ones match the old ones. And mm -hmm. my experience is Probably you can't not. find anything no, to match these days, you know, with <laughs> no, 25, 30-year-old posts. You know. Okay. And then at some point, would we need to replace the poles, though, eventually? Like again? We're going to need to replace some them all point. someday, maybe uh, long after I'm gone. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I really think they can be scraped and painted and they'll be just fine. You know, some of them need covers. You know, at the bottom they have these little openings so yeah. you can get to the wires. The covers on some of them are beat up, but I'm sure those can get replaced too. Uh, I think we can bring the posts back to life and, and then just cover the cost of all the new wiring and all four posts, part for insurance, part for us. That's, that's you know, I think that's reasonable. Are you good with that, Bob? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Good. I, can I just back up? I also wanted to remind you what I said last month is that the, um, the sprinkler system was never inoperable. It's, it, it, it's a functioning system. And they already took care of those leaks, by the way. I'm pretty sure that yeah, they took I care know. of those immediately, yeah. So, that, so that's already been done, the leak. You know, they discovered a couple of other leaks. Um, and that, that, you know, as we know from previous discussions, that could continue to happen because it's a, a dry system that doesn't drain well. And there's already particles in the system and rust. So and Pete's point is well made. Even we're spending, due to the building inspection, a lot of money replacing heads that are essentially okay. Um, the problem is the little metal discussion around them is missing. And the technicality of the code is that they say that it has to be intact. The covers. It would have still worked, you're saying? It still yeah. works. But yeah, they, they, they need to be covered. I guess to protect them from dust and stuff. And this is not a new issue, Katie. Mm -hmm. The building inspector has been noticing that for years, but never really cited us on it because they know what we know, which is you can't buy them anymore mm -hmm. for this particular model, which is why they have to replace the sprinkler head, and that comes with its own new mm -hmm. cover. Am I right about that? Which is why it became a more expensive product, because just buying the cover, the escutcheon plate or whatever it's yeah. called. And, I, and I think the, the only thing I would kind of qualify on that is that the the sprinkler company that tests our sprinklers has been putting on a report that those are, are missing. This is the first year that the inspector chose to make an issue. Right. Gotcha. The first year he chose to make an, an issue of our curtain, too. Uh, does he inspect our other schools in the district? Pardon me? Does he inspect all the schools yes. in the district? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just want it to is, it's not know. local. Um, he's a county person, not mm -hmm. right. Works for the Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Frank Franklin, yeah, Franklin, Cog, or whatever they call it. <coughs> Council of Governments. So, with all these replacements, we'll be in good shape. Yeah. Not the wood yeah. for the time. Yeah, being. the only, you know, we we made a conscious decision a couple of years back when we looked at the possibility of changing the of redoing the entire sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. that the pricing we got on that was so high that we felt if we banked the money that we had available and just use that to keep doing repairs that would serve us well, and that has. I think it's worked very well for us. And we got the new, um, the money for the new projects. Yes, you, we did. Yes. Very excited. Thank you to the Bone Project. Mm. But that's, so that's not really Bob, that's the technology. Well, the Bob and the technology. The class, or, thank you really to the town of Waitley for mm -hmm. supporting the project. Yeah. 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 And they will be analog clocks. <laughs> they will be. Okay. Any other unfinished no, business? Bob, you have anything else? No. That's all I have. No. You're out of here, sir. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Moving on to new business. Discussion of non-union salary recommendations. Okay. Um, did you get this and this in your packet? No. no. Okay. So these salaries are uh, what, what were considered non-union. And what they are is 
uh, what they had started to do uh, last year is to keep them on par with the um, the unit A and the unit C, uh, particularly the unit A with the teachers, and, and they are getting 6% over three years. They did 1%, 2.5, 2.5. And so last year what they did was the non-union received 2% increase, 2% um, cost of living increase, and this year it would be 2% as well. And so this is what they're, um, these are your Waitley people who are non-union, and the other one um, are your district office, the uh, Union 38 school district office salaries. Uh, we're talking about uh, increasing for your information. And what are we doing in the boot service as far as the director? Is that anything happening yes. there? We are working on it um, at this at this point. We were in uh, meetings this morning. At this point, we're, we're, we're really not ready to discuss it. But we are working on it. We will probably have um, more information next month. So the, that's, these are percentages, or these are dollars? It's a dollar yeah. But everybody's two percent. Yeah. And that practice that Lynn laid out around following whatever the contractual obligation was has been going on as long as I've been here. It's whatever they negotiated is what we ended up. I say we because I'm one of those non, non south contractual employees. So how does this get factored into the budgets that we just approved? Is that in there already? She did. She when you looked at yes, mm -hmm. when you looked at those front pages. It's on the. It just said proposed non-union increase, right? And so they were put in. They were proposed at that point. Okay. Um, so she did put them in. Again, this is. We'll vote on that next month. Um, yes, I think so. And tonight is some discussion yeah, only. So yeah. Only. So it's only. That's why. So that's why. Um, it's just so that. You know, mm -hmm. No. Um, I'm assuming we'll have a cafeteria report for June that kind of wraps up where we are with the year. Yes, we'll have, a, yes, we'll have a lot of information in June. Mm -hmm. uh, again, several of us met and uh, Pete was part of it. Is there any sense that the increase has helped offset costs at all this year? Yeah. That was January, right? You mean the increase in the price? In the price. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I, don't I don't think it does. I don't think it's going to make a good mm -hmm. we are. Good news is that we do have the salaries in the budget mm -hmm. for next year. So hopefully that will be the last time we have a deficit in the cafeteria. Better be. So it's just paying for the food at that point? Well, you've got the lunch program bringing money in, and hopefully mm -hmm. the food money, I mean, the money coming out, pay for the food and the government the salaries. Food. I mean, yeah, I think it seems like it ought to work. should be able to cover that, right? So if it doesn't, I think that that would really need to be looked at mm -hmm. very carefully. And, and we've already taken steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other new business? All right, we're moving right along here, folks. Um, I have nothing to report. Do you have anything? No. Principal's report. Huh? We have one in front of you, and uh, two of them are reminders, and one is a quick update. So I just wanted to remind and invite, and that reminds me, I'd like to send an invite to your office line as well. Um, we have two events coming up. Uh, actually, we have a lot of events coming up this spring. Some are uh, much more open to the public, but as we do every spring, our list of events for kids, trips they're taking, things we're doing in school is huge. We have a lot of fun in the spring. 
Um, but as we do every year, Memorial Day Assembly, Friday, May 26 at 2.15 p.m., um, the veterans from the Hale Clap um, Legion join us every year, and um, students sing a couple of songs. Last year, we had a student play trumpet and played taps. We hope to do that again this year. And as always, please join us if you can. That's always a very brief, half an hour long event, but uh, usually very, very nice. Um, also, then before that, May 10th, next week, is our first all-school play in a long time. And um, I've popped in on a few rehearsals. It's really quite awesome what they're doing. And um, we also have t-shirts for just about everybody in the building that we're going to tie-dye in the next week or so. So it should be fun and colorful and it'll be a great time. So, And there's an art um, exhibit of all our student art for about an hour before that time. I forgot to put it on your memo. So beginning at 5, people can come and browse the art. Some of our strings um, uh, players, strings or band, or maybe both, will be playing music for about 15 minutes as people enter, and they'll be doing a medley of the songs that you're going to hear in the play, so it's super well coordinated this year. It really should be a lot of fun, so I just wanted to make sure that school committee had an invitation. Who's the director of the play? Uh, well, Steve and Stephanie Appenell, I would have to say, are co-directors. They really have put it all together. They're the ones who spent the most time in there. Mrs. Gay's had a, quite a role, Paula King too, but I think the first two I mentioned probably are the two that are working the longest and putting in the most time making it happen. There are 10 kids who have a lead, and uh, every class will be in the play though because there will all be choruses for a song or two. Just have to try out for the... Mm -hmm. The 10 are, mm -hmm. are all who's left after tryouts, that's right. Yeah. Cool. And I think the tryouts were open to 4th, 5th, and 6th, so yeah, that would be reasonable. Um, so that should be a lot of fun. And we've, you know, we've worked out all the details. We'll have a nice sound system. We've, uh, we've um, identified a young man who's a Frontier graduate, I think, now, who, um, who's going to help us do our sound. And, uh, we got great deals on all the things we needed. And we're actually not spending any money on the sound system except for renting some special mics. But even there, we got a fantastic deal from a friend of a friend kind of thing. So. Everything is going our way so far. Hopefully, it'll keep up. Is there any up for another two weeks. It for, for people can watch. So the so yes yeah, so the there are some issues with that. We are going to record it in the yeah, house anyway. Okay. And Nancy Leva has done a lot of recording for us, and and sometimes we've sent that off to either FCAT or Frontier Tube to put it up for the community to see. But um, like a lot of schools, we have I don't know eight or ten students whose families don't want mm -hmm. their images on the internet, mm -hmm. and that can get a little complicated. So some of them might say, well, certainly you can record it so that you guys can watch it over in school, but I just don't want my kid to end up on the internet. Right. So what we're going to do is record the whole thing, and then we're going to hopefully look for excerpts where there's, you know, if a class is up there, if it doesn't include a student that's not supposed to be, then maybe we can at least put it on Frontier 2 for people yeah. to watch. If, yeah. Is that what it's called, Frontier 2 or something like that? <laughs> FCAT? Um, FCAT. FCAT is different. FCAT is, their, is the yeah. local access station. Local access station. <laughs> station. Does this, but, yeah. but Frontier also has a website that we could use. Yeah, and, and FCAT has their own rules around getting rights to it and being able to, pu you know, to publish it or play it when they mm -hmm. want. And um, one of the things we didn't know, and, uh, you know, maybe you could help us, but I don't know if they have the technology to do the little fuzzy face over the kids who can't oh, be seen. Okay. You know, I imagine that might be... I can ask and see if that could be arranged. If, if we knew that that could be done and we could identify the students, then... then if maybe not, we then we can also something. probably, if they don't mind being on TV, then um, what I could probably do is put in a request and see if it could just be aired on television but not on YouTube or anything yeah. else like that. We, I think yeah. we talked to Kevin, maybe, that, Kevin Murphy? Uh, I can even talk to Kevin Murphy or Chris Collins, the manager yeah, of the station. may have spoken to both. Yeah. And so we're trying to work out okay. some of that. But yes, we, in some fashion, yeah, in some fashion we want it to be available so grandparents who couldn't make right. it or somebody can get on the internet across the country and, and see at least Dirk search from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the last item is, uh, you didn't ask for it this week, uh, this month, but I thought I'd just let you know that we are looking at 43 school choice students for the 2018 fiscal year. Last time I spoke to you, we had 38 in-house. Um, and since then, we've had uh, a family move just across the border um, into Hatfield. So our numbers right now stand at 40. And at the moment for next year, we're anticipating 43 who've made a commitment. There are still three or four outstanding families that haven't committed yet, but that we've said, please join us. So I can keep you updated again next month. But 
uh, at the very least, we've increased our number somewhat for school choice next year. But does that mean our residents are going down? They moved out of the town? That would be two less residents, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. do you know what the net number is for the whole school? Like Yeah, well that, that didn't change. Okay. It, I mean, they're still counting. Okay. You know what I mean? Two residents became two school choice. So the, right. the net stays the same. The net stays the same. <coughs> just have a different, yeah. Right. Anyway, that's where we stand right now. And we, the classroom sizes are all still 20 or under for next year. Uh, in fact, we may not have a 20. We have 19 and under. So there's still a couple of classrooms where we have room. So if we get some last minute requests, we still can take a few more kids, but we're yeah. going in the right direction. How's the pre-K? Mm -hmm. Good. I think we're going to be full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, what is full? I'm sorry, 15, I forget. 15, I think. 15, <laughs> 15 kids, something like that. And we try to keep it at a 50-50 ratio, so 50% um, special needs or 50% children who have been identified, perhaps mm -hmm. in speech and then 50% typical peers, and so they can, okay. yeah. And it'll be a full day program, which is, yeah. Which is really yeah. Really thrilled. Good. That's all I have. Thank you. Thing. Superintendent. Well, <clears throat> um, I did want to point out that this is Teacher Appreciation Week, and I'd like to, to mention, um, all the teachers in Waitley, all the instructional assistants, the staff, the people who work in this school. It's a wonderful school and it's just a great learning environment for kids. So I'm, I just want to make sure that we really appreciate their efforts and let them know that we do. And on that same note, we have this, this um, plaque that we'd like to present to <laughs> Mr. Skrowski for his many, many, many years of um, Service to the school, to the district, to the, uh, but mostly to the school committee. It's been wonderful um, having him. And I personally, I'm going to miss him, and but I wanted to uh, make sure he knows how much we all appreciate. Well, I thank you for that. And thank you so very much. Figured it's time to move on and give somebody else a chance. But like I told people that are interested, I'm willing to lend my advice anytime because I have a very vested interest in the schools and always have. So that's where I stand on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a lot of time for a lot of years. Oh, yes. Very much appreciate it. Heritage. All right. Any other business? No other business, I'll... Yeah. Oh, um, make a motion to end the meeting? Oh, good. <laughs> I'll, I'll second that. All in favor. Aye. Aye.